Come on, can we give it up for Vladimir? Come on, y'all clap for him. That's amazing. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord's mercy is everlasting and the Lord's truth endures to all generation. I want to call us to worship this morning um, by beginning um, by saying that we want to celebrate today those persons who have won the victory through death on the other side. We also want to celebrate those persons who continue to fight the good fight of faith on this side, who have been through breast cancer. I want to begin this morning by saying this is personal to me. Some 10, 11, 12 years ago, my wife, I never will forget that day, uh, when we were, I was standing in her office, and uh, we received, she received a phone call from the doctor and said that they found cancer in her breast. I watched her go through all manner of things. And today, I hope you will pay attention. I hope that we will engage in this. Um, this is serious business. This is serious business, especially for those who are people of color. Now, whether that color, that nationality, that ethnicity be whatever it may be, please know that this disease runs rampant through our communities. And so before we get going today, would you do me a favor and join me in giving God a hand of praise for all of those persons who have won victory over cancer, whether it be in this life or on the other side. Can we give God praise? At this time, we're going to begin our worship and our choir is coming.
Today we have come here to celebrate restoration. At this time, I want to invite Nurse Brionis to come to the stage. I know I, know I saw her. And she's going to come and provide some information to us, after which we're going to see a video presentation, and then we're going to move forward in our service. Good morning, everyone. Uh, if you look at the back of your program, there's some information you can read along with me. Why are we having this uh, event today? Why are we devoting chapel and the time afterwards to breast cancer? It's because breast cancer is the most common cancer that women get. And it's even though we're better and better at, at getting people to pull through it and survive it, we still lose a lot of women to breast cancer every year. And among black women and younger black women, it's especially a problem. A lot of people think, oh, breast cancer, that's what my grandma would get. But it actually can uh, strike young women, black women in their 20s or 30s. And it's usually a much more aggressive cancer at that time. So if you look at the back here, it says in 2022, by the end of this year, about 36,200 new cases of breast cancer will be diagnosed among black women. And the truth is black women are underserved and their numbers are probably greater than this. And when it's finally caught, it's often in late stages where it's much harder to take care of. Uh, for, younger than, for women younger than 40, breast cancer incidence rate was higher among non-Hispanic black women. That's the group that gets hit the hardest. So I want every single female in this room to think about doing a self-breast exam. I can get literature or direct you to somewhere online where you can watch a video about how to do it. It's never too early to start. Right? Hispanic women fare better. Their group is actually has the lowest incidence of breast cancer, although they should still be diligent in doing self-exams. Uh, so in this year, it's estimated that we'll have 287,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer beyond the very beginning stages. And uh, 51,000 new cases of the real early, early, it's called DCIS, but it means the cancer is still in the mi milk ducts and it hasn't spread to other tissues. That one's a lot easier to cure. We have a much uh, better cure rate with that one. So the lifetime risk of all women, if we put them all in the same pool, is one out of eight women will develop breast cancer sometime during her life. And that's, those are uh, staggering numbers. But I would like to say, thanks to Jesus and his mercy, I am a 10-year survivor of breast cancer. Hi, I'm Hoda Kotby, and I have an important message to share with you. You may have heard my story, or maybe one like it, from a coworker or a friend, or perhaps your mother or your sister. I was educated, I was knowledgeable, I was a veteran journalist who read about, talked about, I even did stories about what was to become my story. You see, in my early 40s, I had never had a mammogram. I was physically fit, a healthy woman with no family history of breast cancer. It wasn't that I was scared or I thought it was a waste of time. I guess it was something I just really hadn't thought about too much. Breast cancer happened to other people. But in 2007, during a routine exam, my physician discovered lumps in my breast. With the aid of a mammogram, I was lucky they found the cancer as soon as they did. But no woman should have to rely on luck. Thanks to technology, innovation in breast cancer detection and treatment continues to move forward with better detection today than ever before possible. That's why I'm grateful to Siemens Healthcare for asking me to come here and talk to you about my story. I know that they're committed to leading the way in important game-changing innovations that will play their part in saving the lives of people like me. 
Innovations like wide-angle breast tomosynthesis, a new 3D mammogram that lets doctors see more of your breast tissue layer by layer and in finer detail. The result is a clearer image that helps doctors find tumors better than standard 2D mammography alone, giving breast cancer no place to hide. I'm thankful to be here today to share my story, and I'm hoping to make a difference for others. So please, don't wait. Do it for yourself and for your loved ones. Schedule your mammogram today. One of the things that happened when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, <clears throat> we turned to the word of God. Dr. Langley, God's word will ground you when everything else around you is falling apart. And so this morning, I want us as a community to stand, please. And on the screens, we're go you're going to find scripture, and we're going to read this responsively. Now, for those of you who may not come from that tradition, this just simply means I'm going to read a verse, and then you're going to read the next verse, and then at the end, we will all read together. Psalm 46 and verse 1 says, God is our shelter and our strength. When troubles seem near, God is nearer. And God is ready to help, so why run and hide? Congregation? It's on the screen, please. No fear, no pacing, no biting fingernails. Even in heavy winds and huge waves or as mountains shake, we are sure and fearless. Congregation. God can stop wars anywhere in the world. God can make scrap of all weapons, snap bows, shatter spears, and burn shields. Congregation. Let us read together. You know the Lord, the commander of heavenly armies, surrounds us and protects us. The true God of Jacob is our shelter, close to God's heart. Amen. Have your seats in the presence of our good and our gracious God. I want to invite, I want to invite at this time Nurse Brionis and uh, Dr. Keisha James to come and join me. We want to, at this time, let's be honest, I want to ask you to please stay engaged with this today. This is serious stuff. Here's the reality. If you have not been impacted by breast cancer in one way or another, there's a good chance one out of eight women experience breast cancer. I'm going to share a fact with us in just a few minutes that men, we are not exempt from this. Men, in fact, quite often are diagnosed with breast cancer. And so today we want to spend a few moments to remember those persons who have fought the fight and they won the battle. Let me say this to us. We win on two sides. We win sometimes on this side. But sometimes we cross over to the other side. That is our faith. And when we cross over to the other side, we have a victory waiting on us. According to the CDC, according to the CDC, there are 42,000 women and 500 men who die each year from breast cancer. Obviously, I could not name all of those persons, but I want to ask Nurse Brionis, I'm sorry, I want to ask Dr. James if she will light this candle in honor of those persons who have won the victory through death.
شد Likewise, ladies and gentlemen, we have any number of persons who are diagnosed with breast cancer, and by the grace of God, they survive. I want to ask our students to do me a favor, please. Would y'all please honor this moment and not talk? Let me, let me tell you why this is important, because especially for ladies sitting over here, one in eight, you don't know what your story is going to be. Your name is not on this list today. However, I do want to make this, make this statement. I didn't have the permission of the student to say her name, so I didn't say it. We have one student at Jarvis right now who's battling breast cancer. Right this moment. Would you please do that, please? I'm asking you to please do that. I want us to now honor um, a number of persons whose names I received. And if you don't mind, I want to call the names of these persons. Crystal Ellis. Sandy Lapin, Meredith Dickinson, Jerry Forbes, Beverly Lambert, Marie Bays, Shawanda Horn, Gwen McLean, Devorah Briones, Denise Dinkins, Kim Brown, Sharona Chambers, Debbie Henderson, Janet Odom, Carla Burnett, Deborah Austin, Marcia Milton, Joanne Rogers, Veronica Slade, and our guest speaker today, Crystal Brown Tatum. In honor of these persons who have fought the fight and won the battle on this side, Nurse Brionis, would you please light this candle? Would you now bow your heads with me as we prepare to pray? The song says, the God who covers angels' armies, whom shall I fear? Can we pray today for those persons who are still in the fight, but not just for those who physically have cancer, but for their caretakers? Can we go before God in prayer? God, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you, how we praise you, how we honor you. Today, oh God, we come to you with a specific request. There are persons who are in the fight of their lives. And we think sometimes that it's just while they're going through radiation, while they're going through chemo, while they're enduring the surgeries. But the reality is they have so many challenges that they have to deal with. Aches and pains and susceptible to diseases after the, after the fact. So God, today we come to lift up these survivors. We come today, oh God, to lift up these victorious persons. Thank you that you have already given us the victory through Christ Jesus. Now God, our prayer that you will do again what you did before. Send your word and heal them. You are much, such a mighty healer. Yahweh Rapha is the way we reference you. You are the God who heals us. And God, so we pray that they be strengthened, that their caretakers be strengthened, that the doctors will have wisdom and understanding and revelation. And at the end of it all, here's what we promise. We will give you praise. We will give you glory because you deserve it in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed said, amen. Would you please clap your hands now and give God praise. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. Let me now make just a, a few announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin with an announcement that I failed to put in the, the program, uh, but Dr. Pruitt, it's incredibly important. 
voting is coming up. Voting is coming up, and it's important. November the 8th, November the 8th. Now, does early voting start here? I'm, I'm a little forgetting, but I think it's November 1st that early voting begins. And so we want to make sure, we want to make sure that you, everyone in here, cast your vote. Listen, listen, cast your vote. Your power is in your ballot. So make sure that you go to the polls and you vote. Those of you who registered down here, you don't have to go all the way back home to do it. You can literally cast your vote right here in this area in East Texas. A couple of announcements. As soon as chapel is over at 1215 today in the fellowship hall, we're going to have, we're, you're invited to wear it pink. Uh, we are celebrating Breast Cancer Awareness Day uh, from 1215 to 115. Uh, we're asking everyone to wear it pink. Uh, wear something pink. Come so you support. And even if you don't have that, please go down to the fellowship hall and let's continue in our celebration. Break the silence, end the violence. Uh, take a stand against domestic violence. October the 19th at 3 p.m. in the Meyer Auditorium. And we're going to have a variety of guest speakers. Uh, please see uh, Dr. Keisha James if you would like more information. First year students, freshmen, there's a mandatory meeting from, this comes from Student Success Services, mandatory meeting uh, for freshmen will be in the Maya Auditorium October 26th, um, on uh, um, October 26th at 4 p.m. Please make sure that you are there. And sophomores, there will be a mandatory meeting uh, by Student Success Service uh, October 27th at 4 p.m. in the Maya Auditorium. Please make sure that you are there. This announcement comes from Dr. Uh, Kariuki, and if I don't make this announcement, she gonna get me. So, so uh, I thought I'd tell y'all, she, she called me 12 times, say, oh, you get my announcement, you get my, I got your announcement, no, I'm messing with you. All right, Barbara C. Jordan Honors Program. We are so excited to have this honors program here at Jarvis. Honors students, honors students with a cumulative grade point average of 3.25 and above, don't miss the deadline, which is October 21st on Friday. Submit your application and support materials uh, to, for admission to the Barbara C. Jordan Honors Program. If you have any questions or uh, any questions or additional information needed, please email Dr. Kariuki at ckariuki at jarvis.edu. Email your application and support materials to honors at jarvis.edu. Students, JCC Writing Lab, I don't know if you know, but we have a writing lab right here on campus. It's in the SSS building, the Student Support Services building. Uh, there's nothing like a smile to, I don't know what that says, meeting of the mind. All right, we right, I should have read that before I got up here. All right, allow Mrs. Holt to help you in one-on-one -on -one private writing sessions. It, it's in the SSS building, which is the building sitting right here in the middle of the campus going toward the cafeteria. She's all the way at the back. Please make sure, Office 159, make sure that you avail yourself of that uh, service. Student Minister Association will have the worship service tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. here in the chapel. Uh, and we want to encourage all our students, faculty and staff as well, to come and be a part of that. And I will say that something wonderful has been happening on Wednesday evenings over here. And I want to encourage everybody to be a part of it. We'll be back in the chapel this Sunday morning at um, 11 a.m. I want to preach a message titled, It's By God's Design. And I want to encourage all of our students, uh, particularly to come and be a part. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to go ahead and put this announcement out that um, the Religious Emphasis Revival uh, is going to be October the 25th at chapel that morning. And then at 7 p.m. on October 26th here in the chapel, we have an, a phenomenal preacher from Little Rock, Arkansas, Dr. Philip Porner. Dr. Philip Porner uh, is going to be our special guest on those two days. And I want to encourage all of our faculty, staff, uh, to please incentivize your students to come and be a part of this. We are serious at Jarvis about educating the head, heart, and the hand, and this is one of the ways that we go about doing that. These are our announcements for this morning. I want to now take a moment to introduce our speaker. I'm excited about this. Um, Y'all see this bio that's in this, um, in this program. I'm not going to read all of this, um, but she's a San Antonio native. I just got back from San Antonio this past weekend. Uh, honors College graduate, uh, completed a postgraduate work in public relations and is the author of three books. Uh, one nationally published fiction uh, novel, Caramel and Cream, and a nationally acclaimed breast cancer memoir entitled Salt Water Taffy and Red Hills. Uh, completed Honors College senior thesis on the overlooked effects of gangster rap music on male perception of women. Has appeared on the Oprah Winfrey Show, the Bill Cunningham Show. The Discovery Channel featured her in the triple negative uh, breast cancer pa uh, patient education program. 
Um, she is very active in the community, has lobbied on Capitol Hill for heart attack and stroke survivors, been instrumental in community outreach on several local political and grassroots campaigns. She was selected by the Houston Business Journal in their inaugural 40 and under professional professionals of Houston, as well as being named a 40 under 40 top professional for Northwest Louisiana from the Shreveport Chamber of Commerce. She currently works as a human resource manager in the pharmaceutical industry and is nationally known for her HR TikTok series entitled Black Girl HR, resides in Mansfield, Texas, uh, where she serves on the board of directors for the Mansfield Art Commission and is a proud member, she said, of Sigma Gamma Rho sorority. Married to retired Sergeant First Class Philip Tatum and has one adult daughter. Most importantly, she is a 15 year advanced stage breast cancer survivor. I want to say one final thing about her. When we sat in my office, Dr. Pruitt, she said she's in the pharmaceutical industry. I want to say this publicly because I think this is important that Jarvis has people like this lady who wants to talk to our science department to make sure that we create something so that we can get our science students into that industry if they want to. This is the lady that we have uh, coming to speak to us this morning. I pray that we will give her our complete attention. Uh, after the choir sings, the next voice that we will hear will be that of Mrs. Crystal Brown Tatum.
helpless around me. Whom shall I Thank you. I'm a little emotional this morning. Uh, my favorite teacher, the one teacher who believed in me, passed away this weekend. His name was Mr. Paul Fiola at Pease Middle School in San Antonio, Texas. And when all the teachers had given up on me, referred me to anger management, and told my parents that I'd probably never graduate, Mr. Fiola took the time and invested in me. And over the years, for every achievement, every graduation, every accolade, Mr. Fiola was always there. We exchanged Christmas cards for 30 years, and so you can imagine how heartbroken I am to know that the one person who really championed for me is gone. But I hope to encourage you today to not only champion for others, but to be a champion for yourself, to always speak up, to always advocate for yourself. And I asked my daughter, Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline attended Baylor University, and I said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm speaking to students. I'm a little nervous because you all are sitting out there, and you're probably like, oh, what is this lady, old lady going to talk to me about? Well, I'm hoping my message uh, will, will reach you because I was not prepared for a breast cancer diagnosis at 35. I had just gotten married for the first time, and I was diagnosed one month after my wedding. And I remember after my journey, my husband said, when he first heard the words that his wife had breast cancer, he really thought I was going to die. And in fact, I was given three years to live. So my question to you is, what will you do with your next three years? What would you do with the time you had left if you were given three years to live? So I felt a lump while I was applying lotion, and I ignored that lump for eight months because it was more in the armpit region than in the breast. I asked my mother, who's a registered nurse. I asked my brother, who's a registered nurse. What is this? Oh, it's just a swollen gland. It's a swollen lymph node. You're using cheap deodorant. Stop buying your deodorant at Dollar Tree. Life went on. The lump still existed. And at the time, my daughter Jackie was 13 years old. And apparently, I must have been walking around feeling that thing, because one day she said to me, you're always, touching your, you're always touching that thing. And I'm like, what thing? And she's like, you're always messing with that thing under your arm. Go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor. At the time, my husband, Philip was stationed at Barksdale Air Force Base. He's, a, he's in the Army, but it was a joint readiness base. And I remember Dr. Kevin Marler, who is one of the most phenomenal doctors in this region. He walked in, and he was playful and, and jovial. But when he felt under my armpit, his mannerisms changed. He got a little more serious. And he said, I'm going to schedule you for an ultrasound and biopsy. Had the biopsy ultrasound. Again, I'm 35 years old. I'm seemingly healthy. I'm a career woman. I'm successful. What could it possibly be? So I was in Washington, D.C., and I was lobbying for the American Heart Association. And I, I always laugh to this day about how um, arrogant sometimes we can be. So there I am in D.C., and they're giving me my list of senators to visit. And there was one little senator that they hadn't had anybody assigned to. And they're like, do you want to go talk to this senator, Barack Obama? And I was like, who is that? No, I'll, I don't want to go talk to him. And that was in 2007, so haha, the joke was on me. But um, so I was lobbying, and I decided to take the phone call, and it was a nurse. And she said, this is a part of my job I hate. And in that moment, I said, wow. She said, it's breast cancer. So I flew back home, and um, I had to prepare to tell my friends and family that I had breast cancer. 
And it was really tough. Again, my daughter was 13. We had just moved from Houston to Shreveport. I had just gotten married. So there were a lot of moving parts in my breast cancer story. But I finally opted, opted for lumpectomy. I had very aggressive chemotherapy and seven weeks of radiation. And I almost didn't do uh, chemotherapy out of fear. And I love that the choir sang a song uh, that addressed fear. And let me just stop to give the young woman who's been singing all morning her flowers. You have one of the most amazing voices I've ever heard. <laughs> I was watching the, the voice last night, and they can't hold a candle to you. But anyways, back on track. Um, I was really nervous about chemotherapy. As someone who had competed in pageants her whole life, I've always worn my hair long and straight. I'm a creature of habit. Uh, imagine having to shave your head tomorrow, ladies. Sometimes it's traumatic for men, too. But I really want you to imagine standing in front of a mirror tomorrow and having to shave your head. Not only your head, go ahead and take those eyebrows and lashes off, too. For me, that was just overly uh, traumatic. And so it was the courage through my 13-year-old daughter who said, Mom, if you don't do the chemotherapy and you die, I will never forgive you. The next day, I went to the hair salon and shaved my head. So it was the courage and bravery of a 13-year-old that motivated a pretty stubborn 35-year-old. So as I was navigating through treatment, um, I talked about Mr. Fiola in the beginning of my speech as a champion. A woman out of Houston, Texas named Karen Jackson became my second champion. Karen was the mother of a friend of mine, but she's also the founder of Sisters Network. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of the organization Susan G. Komen. Quite a few. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Sisters Network. OK. Sisters Network is the only national African-American breast cancer survivorship organization. Why is it important for a separate organization or a separate, um, separate efforts? I want you to think about this startling fact. Black women are less likely to get breast cancer, but more likely to die. Let that soak in. Hmm, less likely to get it, but more likely to die. The math ain't mathin', right? The disparities that I saw as I navigated treatment were astonishing. Um, I was in a, a support group, and I was sitting next to an older African-American woman, and I couldn't help but notice as I stood up to get something, she had a tube sock in her bra. And I really struggled with how to address that with her because I wondered why she didn't have her prosthetic. That was her skin tone. I approached her after the meeting and she said, I wasn't aware, What's a, what, what do you mean prosthetic? I said, well, after your mastectomy, after your surgery, didn't you get your special bras, your prosthetic? She said, my doctor didn't tell me about that. So we called the doctor the next day and he said, I'm sorry, I thought my nurse went over that with her. So again, disparities, speaking up for yourself, being seen, being a champion for others, really important. And I'm glad that you uh, addressed that men get breast cancers too. Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, is a breast cancer survivor. So you may be sitting out there today, oh, I'm just here because I have to be here, or I just came because I want to eat the snacks in the fellowship hall after, please heed the message. One in eight women will get breast cancer. 2% of all men will get breast cancer. Know the signs, know the symptoms. My grandmother was diagnosed when she was 80, and um, my grandmother committed suicide when she was 85. So I like to think that I have her courage I have the strength that um, she was not able to, to muster Has she navigated her own health. I love the theme of restoration. I know one of the songs talked about restoration. Restoration begins with you. Have you ever dropped something and glued it back together? Once you glued it back together, it was still strong. It was just as beautiful. Might have been a little chipped or cracked, but it still worked. That's how we are. You may be broken. But you can be restored, and you will be restored better and stronger. 
Well, I think back to that little girl that Mr. Fiola believed in. I was a little girl who, my brother was killed by a hit and run driver in 1978. I had some childhood uh, sexual trauma in the house that caused me to act out. So again, teachers, uh, she's a troublemaker. She's not gonna amount to anything. One person made a difference. As you think about the next three years, imagine you were given three years to live. And in today's world, three years is really a gift. Who will you champion for? Will you champion for yourself? Will you champion for others? Will you champion for a cause? Be mindful and be encouraged that you do have a voice. Your voice des deserves to be heard. Did I fear going through breast cancer? Not for a moment. Because, see, I had already walked through the valley of death. I'd already seen so many traumas. I've experienced so many losses. Your grandmother, the one person who truly loved me unconditionally, decided to take her own life. That's pretty traumatic. So breast cancer for me, eh, let's do this. If you know someone who is battling breast cancer, be intentional in everything you do. It irks me when people say, let me know if you need anything, as if you're going to say, well, actually, I need my yard cut, and I don't feel like cooking. Can you make me something to eat? People by nature are still very humble. Be intentional. Hey, can I watch your kids for you for a few hours so you can get some rest? Can I stop by and drop off some sandwiches when you have chemo? Be intentional in all that you do. People don't want to ask for help. So... I want to make this message short because, again, I am pressed for time. I know you're, the, you're pressed for time. But if I can leave you with anything today, believe in yourself. You can overcome any obstacles that are placed in your path. I love when people read my bio. It sounds great, but I know the backstory. I know the battles that were fought, the battles that were won. And so every successful person that you see in front of you was once a wounded warrior. So go forward, be restored, and be a champion. Thank you. We must be diligent, must be vigilant about this. Um, it's really difficult for me to stand here and talk about this. Thankfully, my wife is not here today because I can't look in her face during these times and not cry. Because I never will forget the time when she came home from radiation and the entirety of this part of her body was burned with a third degree burn. I'll never forget it. I, I have not forgotten it. I cannot forget it. So today, the speaker asked the question, what will you do with the next three years of your life? She asked it within the context, if you were diagnosed today with a debilitating disease, with a prognosis that said you're going to die within the next three years, what would you do? But may I push that today to say this? Without the prognosis, you don't know. You, you don't know. You, we sit in our comfort and we assume, we talk when we should be listening because we assume that we have time. What if time is almost up? What if for those of you that are in your first year, what if you finish this semester and just before you come back, God forbid a tragedy happens and your dorm bed is empty? What happens if that roommate that you adore, that you hang out with all the time, what if they're suddenly taken away? Would you bow your heads for just a minute? I want to pray. Because I think decisions can be made, even right now, that can affect a lifetime. I truly do believe 
that we are successful or not based upon our own decision. It's not where we have come, from that from which we have come. It has everything to do with what we are willing to decide to do and be. So I pray for us today, Father, in the name of Jesus, with you today, cause us, oh God, to have the resolve to fight through tragedies. In fact, to take tragedies and turn them into triumphs. Today, God, I pray, we pray that we will have the strength and the courage to accept those things that we cannot change. But then, God, may we have the strength and the courage to do something about the things that we can control. We can control how much we read. We can control how much we study. We can control plotting out our course, setting our dreams so big, that as they have said, that we shoot for the moon. And even if we miss, we're amongst the stars. So today, when we take the next three years, somebody today will take this seriously and become a game changer. That's our prayer today in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed said, amen. Would you clap your hands one more time for Mrs. Crystal Brown Tatum? I want to remind you, if you are a science major in here of any kind, please make sure you shake her hand. Make sure that she know who you are. One of the things that we do is that we make sure that we network with persons, Dr. Carter. Um, Sometimes it ain't what you know, it's who you know. And so I want to encourage you to do this. Let me say one with just a couple of final things, and then we're going to get out of here. Students, I want to applaud you. Thank you. I know um, that it is difficult to sit through chapel sometimes, especially when you don't want to be here. But I want to remind us of something. Listen, listen, look up here at me for a minute, because some of y'all still talking. Some of y'all still talking, and you haven't learned yet. So, so let, me, let me help us, because that's what I believe we're supposed to do. Sometimes you have to be there because you're supposed to be there, because they tell you to be there. And by the way, this lady is a testament. At 35 years old, her whole life changed. I didn't have breast cancer, but at 23 years of age, Dr. Sanders, while I was, after I came back from my honeymoon, they told me that I had diabetes. My blood sugar for the last, for the three previous months was over 600. Life changed for me. So please know this. Michael Anderson is a breast, is not a breast cancer, but a cancer survivor. Life changed in a moment. Would you please hear this message? Next three years, I'm gonna challenge some of the professors and then we'll sing our alma mater and go. But I want to challenge some of the professors. Make an assignment, if you will, to ask our students, what are you gonna do with the next three years? and then have that conversation. At the end of this service, at 1215 in the fellowship hall, uh, please don, jo join Nurse Brionis as we wear it pink down in the fellowship hall. Let us stand and let us sing together now our alma mater. Hello, Dr. Lee, Dr. Lee, Dr. Lee. I'm literally waiting on you. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this is bad. Dr. Pruitt, I know I, I might get in trouble one day for this. If we don't respect our school, why would anybody else? We, we have to do that. Dr. Lee.
Receive now this benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you peace in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, your tears, your joys, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of the journey. Amen.